Ooh, that's really good tape. This stuff's a game changer. I can dump Volkswagen sized boulders on this and it'll roll right off. This is gold hog matting. I forgot which kind they are, so I'll put a label up. We got three different kinds. All right, that's about as square as my head. Now we'll move on to cutting it to length. All right, so now we're gonna cut the bottom piece uh, for the sluice. And we'll check it out and see how it goes. And then we're gonna cut square and cut the other pieces, or one piece at a time all the way up to the top. So my brother and I had a slight debate on on the size it should be, and uh, we we agreed to disagree. But we're going to go with nine and thirteen sixteenths. See if I can figure this out. After all, this is rocket science, right? Each, <laughs> each dot contains the same amount of ink so that they're not bigger. This thing is so exact. <laughs> Shaking not included, not included. <laughs> So what do they say? Cut to size and beat to fit? Something like that. Measure twice and cut once. So this is what they're saying there at Gold Hog. Even though you square up the end and you measure over, tell you to make three dots or more on down, measuring from the end, because when you try to square it, the square is not square, so in reality, none of it's actually square. It's kind of square to itself, but you can't measure over and then really cut, because when I see it, my dots actually go this way based on the square here. Take a break here. Uh 
and that all being said, it makes me think that I could just square the end and then use the square the rest of the way too. Because when you make a mark with your your pin, and it's actually not accurate at all. And I'm going to go with that and see what happens. Cuts nice. Not really any strain to it. So they say not to go too hard when you come to the end so you don't get a dovetail on the end of it. So my square is kind of overhanging really bad so it's not an easy thing, but I can do that. All right. So I'll come back when I get it all put together after I get them all cut because you don't want to watch me cut these things. Okay, so this is the configuration I decided to go with. We got talon, two pieces of that, washer, pieces of that and mother load two pieces of that the talon is really aggressive less so but still got a good place here for vortexing and then this is really mellow and that'll this is where your water slows down and so this is will be good for the fine gold catching and the water slows down. Hey Bill, I got the mat done. The gold got cut up and glued in there. I think it's gonna do real good. Yeah, it looks good. All right. At least I got some sluice to work with, huh? Oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, it'll be alright. So in this loose we have three areas of treatment. So three ways to capture gold. This is very aggressive. This has some up and down, straight up and down ways to catch. This has a nice uh, this has a nice riffle to create a vortex and this has a low profile uh, places for vortexing. And vortexing is like the back end of a pickup truck when you throw your beer can, root beer, out your window into the back of your truck it gets sucked up close to the cab because of the low pressure so every place that this water runs over uh, a riffle or a rise or an obstruction creates a vortex on the downstream side causes material to be sucked into the low pressure and then of course the heavier it is it doesn't go as far but it also gets drugged down to the bottom Now, 
if you got too much water in here and not enough force, you kind of just water just kind of slowly goes over. It doesn't create any vortex. So you got to have a combination of the right amount of water and the right speed of the water. You can change that by how fast your water's coming in and the angle and the slope of your sluice. This configuration that I have, I just got back from the river a few days ago and it worked real well. Uh, I didn't have a lot of slope and I didn't have a lot of water speed, but um, it worked It worked real good with a, just a real slow, deep water. So I'm going to run some sand screw concentrates through this and see how it does today. So I'll show you a little bit of that and then I'll show you the end result. I overdid the soap again. This stuff's got a lot of pea gravel in it. A lot of clay too. This is going to give me some grief. It'll be a good test to see how this works. I don't know if you can see how that's clogged up right there. It's because of the, my screw holding back the water. see how this does. I'll run this bucket and then I'll see what we got and I'll, I'll pan out a little bit of the stuff that runs off and we'll see how much we lost if any. Okay now the water's run out real good. And you can see right in here all this stuff caught in there. That doesn't just fall in there it actually gets sucked up in there because of the low pressure that's formed. 
from the water flowing over it. And like I said before, if the water's too deep, it doesn't do a good job. And if it's too slow, it doesn't do a good job. I don't know if I did a good job or not, but I didn't lose anything because I got it all in the tub. So we'll pan this out. Okay, let's see how we did. I didn't get as much material as I thought I would, so I might have lost quite a bit. But I run it really slow because if you go too fast, you end up kicking the gold out before it gets a chance to settle. Um, I am going to pan out a little bit of the runoff tailings and we'll see. This is very heavy. This is uh, super concentrated black sand. See it lining up back here. And I'm going to be a little sloppy because I'm panning into a tub and I know I won't lose anything important. And this gold tends to be super um, what's the word? Super fine, super pulverized, so it's powdery. And uh, so it's hard to get it to move around when it gets like touching the surface of the pan or like that. It won't get stuck up in that heavy black sand. It won't move very well because it uh, it's so small and sometimes the black sand is a lot bigger. And so it causes it to hang up and stay on top. I need to go get some soap. All right, here we are. Somebody once said, makes the water wetter so the gold won't float as easy, but it's in this situation. Okay, look at that. Can you see that? that all that's gold. It, fall, it fell down through the sand. And it's like I said, it's stuck to the pan, it won't, won't hardly move. That's pretty exciting. So that's how you pan out sand screw concentrates. And I'll tell you this, not every quarry is the same. I've gotten some from a couple of different quarries because I have an inside track. One of them is not as good as the other. That's a little exciting. Alright, so I'm going to cheat. Not really cheat, but I'm going to try to look at this early. Get some water in here and see if I can pull it back. I'll call it good and then later when I it's gonna take me a long time to finish this off. Couple pieces of lead. Right there. Let's see if we can get the smile to show up. <laughs> Over.
Yeah, I'm just gonna have to do a sloppy job this time. Panning, you might notice that I skipped a little bit because it's probably boring. So that's what I was able to collect from. Uh, that material running not enough water super fine gold you see how it started to float there maybe and uh, with the gold hog matting now if I wanted to get real scientific I'd check which which caught the most but it's probably the bottom two sections that did the best job <clears throat> that's pretty good I think I'm ready to Try it on beach sand. <laughs> all right. When I get it all cleaned up, I'll take another picture. Okay, that's it. Cleaned out about, about as good as I can get it. Just realized that looks happy, doesn't it? There's still about, well, I don't know how much, but I got probably 90 percent of the gold out of that black sand. So that's what that looks like and I will send a, I will bring up a picture if I get anything out of the tailings. So there's my thumb. Anyway, hang tight.